Well, good morning. We're in Arizona. I don't know if y'all can see it down there. Train going by on the interstate. Good thing to see. But we've reached our six month anniversary. And I thought I'd give her an overview. Kinda. <coughs> so we have out here, you can see our swells and how everything is going there. It's going pretty good actually, I think. The key line going across. Still the first level, but September's coming. Means it's gonna cool down, get back to work. And this one over here is about ready for us to go. And we've repaired the one down there where Ryder's at. So hopefully when the water comes from up here, comes through these and catches. And this time we kind of got it diverted here. It's gonna come down and hopefully end up in here with a little bit in the center. We'll see. And then over there is our first garden that we started. We'll give you a closer look. As you can see, we got a shade cloth up finally. And it's working out, keeping us cool. It's working out a lot. Now, I highly suggest that if you're in the desert, you get one. All right, bear with me while I get down and we'll do a walkthrough. And I think Dana's going to join us this morning on our walk. So we get to hear her perspective. <sighs> Say good morning. Good morning. So that's my wife, Dana. We're going to walk over here to the key line first. And as you can see, it's, it's coming along. Um, we got some more okra in there. Some hemp plants coming up. Sweet potatoes are taking off. Everything is rebounding nicely in here. What do you think? It's amazing. <laughs> the rains really did us wonders. Yes. So we're coming towards the end of the monsoon season and everything is benefited from it. We get some peas coming up. This moringa. This moringa is not doing as well as the others. And I think it's because it's multi-branched. So we'll see. I got some more moringas planted down here. So we get fruit trees. Now, over here on our side garden. And this is where we're going to do mostly, you know, arid climate plants, cactuses and stuff. I kind of stopped the flow that was going down here by putting in these little wells. So as you come down, you go through a well each time and that'll stop the erosion. And comes down here and fills out. And we have seeds put in here, but nothing's really doing all that well. We don't really do anything to this garden except build it right now. And same thing with most of the ones out here. We threw seeds in to see, but we're not really maintaining it. Now our goji berries, with the little work we did with trimming them and everything, are coming back really nice. And some of them are flowering. Let's see if we can see a flower on this one. No, but the ones out there, yeah, there's old flowers here and here. Um, those are gonna produce goji berries, which are good. I was eating about three a day this spring. Uh, what do you think, Evan? They're delicious and extremely beneficial for your health. Yeah. So one of the things about here is we wanted to make a unique kind of food forest. Most of the stuff you see here is edible, medicinal, or you um, utilitarian, I guess would be the word, can be used. Soap from the yucca. Um, agave produces agave honey, kind of agave juice. That produces a fruit, a fruit. My new favorite fruit are the hedgehogs. Oh, those are delicious. <laughs> These guys, they produce fruit. That produces tea and medicine. Um, 
So it's a little bit different. And we'll come over here. And this is one of the ones that we're getting ready to start this fall to get planted. I'm going to dig out all the rest of the stuff. And I also wanted to take the time to show that when I kept saying um, renew, reusable, renewable resources. So, as y'all can see, I trimmed up all these. And at first I thought I, they weren't going to do nothing. I thought, well, shit, maybe I just messed them up. But they're coming back beautifully. And they're coming back controlled, hedged. They're not so foreboding. And I, oh my God, if you could smell that. It smells exactly like sage. Because <laughs> it is sagebrush. Yeah. But the, um, the creosols are starting to bloom again. Everything's reblooming, which is great. I'm hoping that the hedgehogs rebloom. Really like another round of those fruit. All right, so this is our living area, somewhat, our control area. And we try to stay cool. And as you can see, the greenhouse got emptied out. I'm getting ready for the big dig. Now, I thought I was going to be able to do this over the summer, but as it turns out, even in 90 and high heat, it's still brutally warm to come in here and start digging. That guy has gotten huge. Let me give you an idea there. The size of Ryder, and Ryder's not a small dog. Um, in here, we have some peppers and tomatoes coming up. We have a lufta over here that's finally taken off. We're down to the last two things of yams. Sweet potatoes and all that are all out. But kind of getting this emptied out so we can start working. And that's going to be fun. I moved the papayas out. And they seem to be liking their little enclosed area. They're getting pretty big. Yeah, they're doing well. They are. All kinds of new leaves yeah. on them. Look at that. So, the moringa trees are doing good. They're getting big. Sweet potatoes, yams. They're all doing good. Now, aside from the sweet potatoes that are out here, I don't have to dig up nothing this year. So, next year it's going to come back even better. I hope. That's the plan. And we put some eggplants in here. Now, we dig the holes, put the plants in the hole, and then don't fill up the holes. The holes help. Okay. Um, sweet potatoes. That moringa is doing great. Um... We've had squash. Apple time. Yep. And these squash are getting huge and producing. So, pretty happy about that. This moringa tree. It's, give me an idea. It's about the size of my thumb. So, I think it's going to go. And this one's taking off. Now, this is one we thought we had lost at the beginning of the year, but the monsoon brought it back. So, expecting one here. We're getting this bed ready. We're probably going to do beets in this bed, this beets and turnips in this bed in the fall. And we're getting, when we readjusted the swell, it's looking good. Things have responded. Beans coming up here. We got more okra back there. Sweet potatoes are taking off everywhere. This moringa was one we planted in the very beginning, a seed, and it took a long time to come up. Look at this stock. Yeah, he struggled for a little while. And man, the leaves off of it are so good put them in eggs, put them in everything. With this, you can eliminate your vitamins. You can eliminate a lot of stuff out of your life. Um, now, I wouldn't suggest it without talking to a doctor or do your own research. But it's gotten me off my multivitamins. Um, lowers blood pressure. I've noticed that my, my sugar levels are staying stabilized. I don't have to 
run somewhere to get an orange juice to adjust my sugar levels nothing like that so as long as i eat this little leaf i have a pretty good day um, it doesn't take much to eat and i would suggest that you start eating slowly yeah. and build yourself up because what it does is open up your blood capillary so it will raise your heart rate a little bit in the beginning until you get used to it after that you don't feel it now i wouldn't suggest eating a moringa nut right off the bat if you have high blood pressure because it will jack you up but the cactuses have been blooming again um this one still got some leaves or flowers going on or i'm eating <laughs> um but the fig taking off lots of new growth since the monsoon season no, no. I'll get that. But it's taken off yeah, sweet potatoes of yeah sweet potatoes now our watermelon took off it's going everywhere and we have watermelon <laughs> pretty happy about that yeah I'm excited for watermelon so yeah I'm coming over here and I'm taking off this side of the greenhouse because the sun as I'm going into it is starting to come lower on the horizon here so it comes up over here goes across here like this and then sets right right about there where the mountains are at um, and it's starting to go lower and lower so I can take off this side to get more sun into the tomatoes and peppers open up a little more air take this and cover it for hopefully what's going to be new additions next year or next week um we're coming into the like i said the cooling season so now we can start planting stuff that we've been wanting to plant trees um mainly mulberries um apples uh apricot Oh. Oh. Yeah. Flower. but that's coming up hopefully next weekend that we start getting the trees in now over here we started laying out this side um, about where you see the crates is where we're going to do a chicken pen here it's going to come out here we're going to have a door going in here and then we're going to have a back back here the, the hatch open up to the back so we can get the eggs out and that'll go along the key line eventually we're going to have the water totes lying here and basically it causes a checkpoint or checkpoint uh choke point right over there for whatever um and it'll tie in and it keeps everything pretty close to where we do our watering where we do our fertilizing and all that so we just wanted to say we made it six months our garden is growing and you our know amazing yeah we've ate out of it we've had vegetables that we've grown ourselves um a pretty good list so far and i think it's only going to get better and I think we are a truly blessed couple. And get, oh, out, get out here and do some work. We got guided to the right place. Uh, we want to let you guys know that it can be done. I mean, I heard a prepper channel and I unsubscribed from it really quick because he said something that was stupid. He said that, oh, if you try to start to grow in your garden and doing all this, you're going to starve. You're not going to get food. You can't do it. It's too late. Give me a break. This is six months, and we're eating out of this already. In less than six months, we were eating out of our garden. I so think we were eating it out of it about three months. Actually, I think we had our first radish about the first 45 days. Okay. <laughs> um, I was thinking the radishes and the tomatoes. Yeah. But we've had potatoes, we've had squash, we've had okra, we've had beans, we've had a couple of snack peas. They didn't do good. We planted them at Carrots. the wrong time. Carrots. Um, 
What else? The squash. Squash. Okra. Okra. Moringa. Moringa every day. Um. So, I mean, guys, it's never too late, and it and does. By no means are we self-sufficient, but we're well on our way. We're within our five-year plan. Oh, we're way ahead of that, I think. So. Guys, just get out there and do it. Huh? You know, when's the best time to plant a tree? Five years ago. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the next best time was yesterday. The best time, right now. So, I mean, just go put something out that you know you can eat that you like. Moringa. I was unsure about Moringa until I ate it. And then I know why I'm supposed to grow it now. Um, too many health benefits. And it's an easy plant. If you live in zone eight or below, uh, higher, you can grow these things. You can grow them in zone six, but you're not gonna have a winter. You're gonna have to take precautions, you you know? But zone nine, a little bit of protection. You can grow these things, they're gonna be massive. Um, I'm, I'm guessing by next year, they're probably gonna be at least 20 feet. I hope. But anyway, we love you guys. Be good to one another. Be safe out there. If you have any questions, be sure and hit us up. Have a great day.